These are the last lines of the Iliad, the epic poem about the Trojan War, which supposedly happened around the 12th century BC. The story was written by the Greek poet Homer, or so most historians tentatively agree, and we will refer to the translation by Barry B. Powell. Early in the story, Queen Helen of Sparta left her home and husband to be with Prince Paris of Troy, inspiring the Greeks to sail 1,000 ships across the sea and attack Troy. After 10 years of fighting, Prince Hector, the champion and defender of Troy, was finally killed by the Greek anti-hero Achilles. After the battle, King Priam of Troy sneaks into the camp of the Greeks and the tent of Achilles. The king asks Achilles to let him take Hector back to Troy for 12 days of funeral ceremonies. Knowing his own father will never see him again, Achilles sympathizes with King Priam and lets the man take his son's body home. So we begin the tale. Saffron-robed dawn was spreading out over all the earth as they drove the horses to the city, and the mules carried the corpse. Nor did any other man or fine-belted woman recognize them, except Princess Cassandra, like golden Aphrodite, who had gone up to Pergamos, the highest point of the city, and saw her dear father standing in the wagon, and the herald, the city crier. Seeing her brother Hector lying in the wagon, drawn by mules, she cried out and called throughout the city, Trojan men and women, come and see Hector, if you ever rejoiced when he returned alive from the battle. A great joy to the city and to all the people. So she spoke, and no man or woman stayed in the city. An unbearable sorrow came over all, and they gathered around Priam at the gates as he brought in the corpse. First of all, Hector's dear wife Andromache and his revered mother Hecabe threw themselves on the light running wagon and tore their hair, holding Hector's head, while the throng stood around and wept. And they would have spent all day weeping and wailing for Hector in front of the gate if the old man had not stood up in the wagon and spoken to the people. Make a way for the mules to pass through. Later you can have your fill of lament, when I have brought him to the house. So he spoke, and they stood aside and allowed the wagon to come through. When they came to his famous house, they placed Hector on a corded bed. And beside them they set singers, leaders of the lament, who began the song of mourning. They chanted it, and the women made lament. Among them, white-armed Andromache led the dirge for Hector, the killer of men, holding his head in her hands. O oh, my husband, you have perished at a young age, and left me a widow in our halls. Our child is still an infant, doomed to a wretched fate. But I don't think he will arrive at manhood. Before that, the city shall be utterly destroyed. Savage pain is left for me above all. So she spoke, and the other women wailed too. Among them, Hector's mother Hecabe began her sobbing complaint. Hector, much the dearest to my heart of all my children. While you were alive, you were dear to the gods. And they still care for you, although you are snared in the fate of death. So she spoke, weeping, and she roused endless wailing. Then Helen, third among the women, began her laments. Hector, much the dearest to my heart of all my brothers-in-law, for my husband brought me to Troy. Would that I had perished before. I never heard an evil or unkind word from you. Everyone hates me. So she spoke, weeping. Old man Priam spoke to the people. Bring wood to the city, my Trojans. Have no fear of a cunning ambush. When Achilles sent me off from the black ships, he promised he would do us no harm until the twelfth day has come. So he spoke, and they yoked oxen and mules to wagons, and quickly they gathered in front of the city. For nine days they gathered a boundless supply of wood, but when the tenth dawn, who sends light for mortals, arose, they carried out the brave Hector, pouring down tears. They placed him on top of the pyre, and they cast in fire. As soon as dawn with her fingers of rose appeared, the people gathered around the pyre of the glorious Hector. When they were gathered and assembled in a group, 
They first extinguished the fire with flaming wine, all of it, as deep as the vast strength of the fire had penetrated. Thereafter his brothers and companions gathered the white bones in sorrow. Hot tears ran down their cheeks. They took the bones and placed them in a golden chest, covering them with delicate purple cloths. Then they placed the chest in a hollow grave, and over the grave stacked great, thick stones. Quickly they built up a barrow, and all around it they placed watchmen. In case the Achaeans, with their fancy shin guards, should set on them before the end of the truce. After they heaped up the barrow, they went back to the city. Gathered together, they dined on a splendid meal in the house of Zeus nourished Priam, the king. In this way they held the funeral of Hector, tamer of horses. The End Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for details on the book referenced in this video.